Chassis Brakes uh, apparently is uh, one of the uh, the oldest new companies around. Uh, briefly, what is the history of Chassis Brakes? Well, you, you pointed it out correctly. We are uh, a, an old company in a young shell, I would say. So Chassis Brakes exists since 2012. We are a carve out out of the Bosch uh, braking systems, but we have a long history which is beyond 90 years, uh, originally owned by Bendix uh, for the longest time till uh, Allied Signal bought the Bendix um, business. And then Bosch took it over in 1996 and held it basically till 2012. And since then we are a Chassis Brakes International uh, headquartered in, in Eindhoven, Netherlands. Uh, with operations around the world uh, from uh, Europe, Portugal, Poland, Turkey, uh, as well, Fra France, but also in India, uh, in Thailand, in China, uh, in Brazil, and nowadays in Querétaro, Mexico, with our North American and America's headquarter in Detroit. How many people work for Chassis? Today we have uh, about 5,200 employees mm -hmm. uh, around the world, um, basically distributed throughout all the regions. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a few more, unfortunately. Uh, Australia was a big part of our operations and uh, we had to close this down due to the industry leaving Australia. Mm -hmm. You uh, offer a full line of uh, brake solutions. Uh, do companies come to you with new ideas or do you, do you develop your own ideas and then take them to the companies? Well, we have our own ideas and uh, we have our own architectures which we develop. Uh, so we produce first of all um, products such as rotors or drums, but we produce also the brake calipers and the drum brakes. And uh, here we have our architectures which are our IP. So we call it, we have synonyms for those such as ZOHE, um, brake architecture for, for calipers, which we think is one of the leading architectures in the world. Uh, chassis brakes develops uh, electromechanical brakes uh, for parking, not only with calipers, but also with drum, which is brand new. We're going to be the first one launching an electromechanical drum brake. So the old, let's say, one would say the old technology married with new um, uh, capabilities, so that's going to be going into production in 2019 and uh, we have more ideas to develop the market going forward, especially when you think about braking technology uh, for electrical vehicles but also for autonomous driving, which is, a, is going to be remain a key uh, safety feature for vehicles. You have a, an animated graphic on autonomous driving. Uh, let's go over and take a look at that, okay? Yep, please. So doctor, we're already talking, or you're already talking, I should say, about levels four and five uh, in, in the braking system. Uh, what can you tell me about where your uh, uh, discussions are headed right now? Well, we believe that um, with electrification and more electrification and more computing power and more uh, uh, higher voltage systems, there are more applications for electrification in the car considering also the brake, which is now today very safely running on hydraulic uh, pressure. And, uh, and everyone, when we think about autonomous driving, we, we have to think about redundancy. And uh, you, someone has to create redundancy, and the idea is, in our case, that we create redundancy on the wheel, mm -hmm. so that we don't have to carry the same systems twice. And uh, the braking will be and remain as an integral part for safety, stopping the car uh, at any speed uh, safe and therefore we believe that ultimately we can go with a dry brake which we call brake by wire mm -hmm. so that the the ABS and ESP functionality are incorporated in every wheel where the brake is and therefore we always have redundancy uh, for, for one axle for sure. So if one fails, one brake fails, we always have two or at a minimum three, a uh, maximum three uh, to, to brake the car. Um, this is in development. We are working uh, with our new team in, in Eindhoven in the Netherlands uh, to develop software and uh, electromechanical know-how and we're looking with partners to, to team up to bring this to the market at a, 
at a fast speed. Uh, it needs partners as customers, but also other partners who have certain vehicle know-how and technology uh, to, to team up and to bring this to, to, to the automotive um, as quick as possible. We see it coming, uh, for sure, when everyone went to steer by wire, uh, then the, the next step to go to brake by wire is very, very close. Doctor, running a uh, huge corporation as you do requires uh, not only uh, concerns about day by day, but your future plans and your strategy. What kind of strategy is in place at Chassis? Well, we wanted to develop a, a strategy at Chassis Brakes which uh, every one of our employees can understand. And so we, we, we created RISE 2020 in 2015. Uh, which we in fact will be reviewing uh, this year because we are already nearly there. Unfortunately, time is passing by quick. Uh, but uh, we said, let's do everything by two, focus. And we, we, we said, okay, we don't need to find new customers, just do more with the same customers. So let's double our business with the customers uh, if we can, and we do this best if we perform. And uh, so we, we said, okay, let's double the market share by two, be successful, um, by doubling our uh, uh, or getting our EBTA to a two-digit EBTA, uh, to grow to a company uh, with um, uh, selling two product families uh, to to our customer, uh, so everything by two to create a, a two billion euro company, if possible, if we would find a merger and acquisitions which are meaningful, not necessary. So this this has been evolving over the last uh, three years, very successful. We will be organically growing uh, to over 1.5 billion over the course of the next four years uh, in U.S. dollars, and we will be um, we focus everything on uh, customer operations, on operational excellence, and on our products. And we are focusing very clearly on our products. That's what we understand best through our history. Uh, we have today employees uh, still who started with Bendix and are still with us. Uh, intrinsic value we have on know-how and knowledge about what could go wrong and what could go right. And that's um, where we feel extremely comfortable and that's why we think our strategy, which was set out in 2015, has been taking a tremendous foothold. And we're going to continue to develop this and we're going to drive this forward with our new technologies, uh, which I have talked to you about earlier. Well, congratulations. It seems like you've got everything under control, and let's hope the economy and it doesn't break and that uh, you have a, a bright future. That's wonderful. Oh, thank you very much. We hope it's the same. Okay. That's necessary. Thank you. <laughs> thank you.